What's going on? I'm Sam, and I've had a very interesting morning, to say the least. It started with getting a letter from the company who's financing my Civic, and it said that my insurance had lapsed, and I owed them $3,500 for the insurance that they purchased. Now, this was super alarming, to say the least. So I gave them a call and found out that everything's good. I don't actually owe any money. <laughs> I had changed policies and they got the notice of policy change, so everything's good, I'm still covered, and I don't owe them $3,500, which I don't think I would have been able to afford. And after that, I went to my dentist to pay a bill that was passed due by like a really, really long time. I was about to make my appointment and then I realized that my dental insurance had lapsed this summer. I don't want to talk about that. But now that that's all figured out, I'm at the shop. I need to get some cash, so I'm gonna finish working on this Toyota, fix the brakes, and list it for sale. I'm finally back on a normal schedule where I already uploaded today's video. I have it set to go live at about 6 p.m. It's still really early in the day, so I can get a lot done. I'm gonna start by trying to fix the brakes on this T100 so I can sell it, and also removing my forklift tires so that I can get those replaced. Well, I went to get the tire off on this truck, and I realized I don't have any of my sockets with me for my impact and the emergency tire kit is gone So there's not even a tire wrench in there. I don't have any of my tire wrenches They're all in my garage even if it had the emergency wrench It probably wouldn't have fit with how deep these wheels are So I'm gonna move on to getting the forklift wheels off these wheels have slowly been getting worse and worse And now it's getting to the point. It's super hard to drive because they're stretching so much I didn't know how to get these wheels off at first, but after playing around with it and using the hammer, I was finally able to get the center caps to turn a little bit, so I should be able to twist those all the way off and then take the lug nut off for the wheel, which I just realized I don't have sockets here. I see the cotter pin, so that's not too bad. I forgot I still had one of my tool bags in the RAM, so it had a few sockets in it and I was able to get what I need to finish this job. There we go. That was easy. Oh my gosh, these are so heavy. So I started with the driver's side caliper, which is what the mechanic had said was wrong with this truck. After bleeding it, I didn't notice a difference and I didn't see any leaks, so I started going around the truck and bleeding all the brakes. When I got to the rear driver's side, it looked like the caliper might be leaking, but I kept going, the brakes kept stiffening up. Man, if only I had watched this video earlier. I didn't realize that no fluid was coming out of this caliper. I had gone back to it a couple times, so I'm not sure if maybe it did start bleeding after this shot, but I'm pretty sure I went back at the end and picked this shot up because I didn't have it from earlier. So there is a really good chance that this wheel is the wheel that's causing all the problems. I still really like this bottle, but it might not be the best thing for troubleshooting brakes while you're alone. So I finally got to the passenger front and after I bled them it looks like it has a slow leak where it's dripping fluid every once in a while so I'm pretty sure this is the caliper that's bad. For a minute there I thought the master cylinder might be bad but it does look like it is just this caliper. The leak almost looks like it's coming from the bleeder screw. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. I might do a little bit more troubleshooting before replacing this caliper. And of course, bleeding these brakes, I used one of my all time favorite brake bleeder tools, which is this bottle. Not only does it keep the brake bleeding jobs mess free, it also makes for one man brake bleeding jobs, which is awesome, because right now I'm alone in the shop and I don't have anyone I can borrow to help me bleed these. I think I've used it every single brake bleeding job I've done in the last year or two. So if you want to check this out, I'm leaving an affiliate link in the description like last time. I just heard back from the guy, so we're going to go get these forklift tires changed. Well, I went to get these tires put on and he had the 14 inches instead of the 12 inches 
and these were a really good price for a hundred a piece installed I decided to go with the bigger tires he said if they didn't fit right he had a pair of used 14s like this that would be a little smaller because they're worn down just a little bit more I ended up having him put these on they seem to fit okay they're not really rubbing anything they're pretty close to a few things but they're not quite touching they seem pretty close to the side so if the forklift starts tilting going over uneven terrain it might be close what I want to do is check by going over a couple things so they're driving great now I'm actually able to go forward and turn without the tire dragging because it's so loose turns are a lot easier than they were before and I'm able to turn a lot sharper than I was ever able to turn before Well, it looks like the wheels might actually be too big. I did get stuck going out of my shop. This is a steeper drop off than most places would have, but I still shouldn't have gotten stuck. So I'll probably give him a call and see if he can get me some 12 inch wheels. So this forklift is almost ready to sell. I need to put one more coat of paint on it. I wanna put the diode in so it starts charging and then just put everything back together. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do that tonight though. I wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one. Okay, come on, let's go.